Bye, friends. Dude, seriously already? Are you for real? Wait your turn, girl. Recently, I have gotten quite a few new followers from my walk away dress video. And with that, I realized I never actually made an introduction video of myself. I just sort of started making YouTube videos. I thought a crafting day would be the perfect opportunity to make a little video just introducing myself and Mishkin. This is Mishkin. So if you don't know me, hi, my name is Katie. I am a seamstress and I make stuff. Most of the content you'll find on my channel is costuming. Um, you'll get a little bit of other sewing thrown in there, but especially historical costuming or a bit of cosplay. And I'm also really into vintage sewing. Does everything have to be about you all the time? I also like crafting, which leads us into what I'm doing today. Today's craft is that I'm going to be making some literal fashion plates. Personally, I think I'm hilarious. If you don't know what a fashion plate is, a fashion plate is an illustration demonstrating the highlights of fashionable styles of clothing. Traditionally, they are rendered through etching, line engraving, or lithograph, and then colored by hand. Now, if that sounded particularly smart to you, it is because I did not come up with that. I just got that from Wikipedia. Fashion plates, love it, love fashion plates plates like i said i think i'm hilarious so i have this stack of plates that i thrifted over the course of a few months and some of them were cheaper than others but some of them were not quite so cheap and some of them i bought kind of in a set so they would come with two or four or Whatever, so I have this whole stack here and I have this stack of fashion plates here that I have printed off and I am going to merge them into some fashion plates. Now, these fashion plates that I have printed off are not my images. Um, my friend Marion was very kind to allow me to use them. She has a Flickr account where she scanned and uploaded all of these images from her own collection and has allowed other people to use them. So I will link that below. She is super sweet. She also has a YouTube channel and I will link that below so you can go check her out. Relatively straightforward craft. So without further chatting about, I guess let's get started. Let me go see if I can find the other one. This is Gustav. He's fat and wonderful and very long suffering. Starting off here, I have this stack of fashion plates. Um, I just took those images that Marianne let me use and went to my local library and printed them off using their color printer because I don't have one. I also have this here list labeled 2021 costume, 21 questions, um, which you may have seen floating around the internet a while ago, all like sewing related questions, um, 21 of them that you were supposed to answer to celebrate 2021. So that shows you how hip and on top of the trends I am. <laughs> but I figured I could use these questions to kind of prompt and talk about who I am. Getting serious here. I have this little doohickey and I think what I'm going to do is like press this up against the window so I can see what's going on from this side and then trace my circle on the back so that if I mess up um, you won't see the lines. Who am I? I am... this is not going to work. This I'm Katie. I... Well, uh, I'm not graceful. Anyway, I like this one because it has a mom and like an older girl and a younger boy and that's what I have. That's I have two kids, an older girl and a younger boy. I'm a seamstress. I learned a little bit of sewing from my grandma when I was a young girl, which was amazing. I'm so thankful to have those memories. As an adult, I really wanted to get back in it, so I learned a little more from YouTube. I got into like refashioning. I ended up in an apprenticeship with a master tailor and I completed that. And now for my career, I am a professional seamstress. Now you may be thinking to yourself, oh, if she's a professional seamstress, she will definitely have a lot of professional content, right? No. All of the content that you see here is going to be my personal projects and what I 
most of the time what I call my chaos sewing. Since sewing is my career as well as my hobby, a lot of the times when I'm done with work for the day, uh, here, let me see if I can show you what I'm doing. I am just exhausted and I want to be sewing. I would rather something be imperfect and done than perfect but never leaving my UFO box. So in my personal work for myself, I will cut a lot of corners or maybe not make a mock-up when I would never do something like that in my professional life. As much as I would love to be one of those super aesthetic YouTubers that has like the perfect sewing setup and perfect everything all of the time, unfortunately that's just not the reality of the situation. That's not who I am. Um, I am very often a big old mess. If I make a mistake, I'm not gonna kind of try and hide that because that wouldn't be authentic. It wouldn't be true to me. This is kind of taking forever. I'm gonna finish measuring these out and wash the plates and then I will get back to you for the more exciting stuff. Alrighty, I am going to cut these out and maybe start answering a few saucy little questions. What is your favorite genre of costuming? I have been really into historical cosplay lately or vintage cosplay. Cosplay where there is an element of historical sewing to it. I actually have a historical Hawkeye project that I am working on. I am very excited to start that. And here's my first little lady. What originally got you into costuming? After I learned how to sew, I started volunteering at a local theater to do costuming, and then that branched out into a lot of local theaters. I was just costuming all of these different shows. Just wanted to, you know, spread my wings and learn new stuff. So anyway, this is this little gal. Then the pandemic happened. I kind of started sewing more for myself and from there i kind of started making my own videos because i was inspired and i wanted to share what i had created and now we're here so this is the next one which projects are you the proudest of i am really 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 proud of my agatha harkness cosplay that was kind of the beginning of really starting to find my personal style and feeling confident in what i was wearing i had so many highs and lows with that project i'm just really proud that i stuck with it and it came out the way that it did Bloop. She's sweet. I had to decapitate her cute little umbrella here. This is completely off topic from any of these questions, but I need to talk about this. Look at this boy. I think that's supposed to be a boy. That does not look like a boy. That looks like a man who had never seen a child before in his entire life said, I'm gonna draw this child, but I don't know what a child looks like. So I'm just gonna put my face on it. What an interesting, uh, style choice. I can't find the paintbrush I was planning on using because of course I can't. So we're gonna run to the dollar store around the corner and pick some up. Alrighty, we have relocated. With me I have hairspray, some brand new paintbrushes, and my scissors just in case I need to cut everything down. So let's get going. Before doing anything else, I'm gonna spray the fronts of these pieces of paper with hairspray as it helps lock in the ink so that there's not any streaking or anything once you add the Mod Podge on top. Let's see if this is a satisfying sound at all. Kind of. Are you team cut or team trace when it comes to patterns? I am team cut if the pattern is still commercially available and like especially the big three, where you can go to Joanne when they're on sale and get them for like $2. I am, however, Team Trace. Oh, I'm sorry, kitty. I didn't mean to scare you. I am, however, Team Trace if the pattern is out of print, like it's actually a vintage pattern, or if it's like a more expensive pattern from an indie pattern maker, those I will take the time to trace so that I still have the other sizes if I need them. Pins or pattern weights when it comes to cutting a pattern? Definitely pattern weights. I am a fan of anything. That's satisfying. I'm a fan of anything that saves me time when it comes to cutting out patterns. Which era or genre would you still like to make a costume of? 
Uh, oh, well, this is fitting. I am dying to do Regency and like 1830s. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish spraying these and then we'll move on. Now that those are dry, the next step is just to Mod Podge the back of these and place them on the plates. Starting with a little foam brush here. I'm gonna cover the entire back from like the whole thing, especially the edges. I'm gonna try to use kind of a thin layer of Mod Podge. And I'm just pressing down the corners really, really well because I am sort of getting bubbling. We're going with it. Never removed this price tag. Next question, what is your favorite tool to use? My favorite tool to use is my sewing machine, specifically my industrial sewing machine. She has a name, her name is Sophie, and I would not be able to work as quickly as I do or get as much done as I do um, or as complicated things that I do. That wasn't a sentence, but I think you know what I mean, unless I had this specific industrial machine. It's oh no, I forgot to take off the price tag again. Gotta do this fast before that dries. That's that one. Do you pick a project and then procure materials or collect materials and let them speak to you? Kind of both. I thrift a lot of my materials. And so I have this list of, I don't know, maybe 30 different projects at a time that I'm interested in doing. I keep them just in my notes app. Um, on my phone and anytime I go to a thrift store, I just kind of take a peek around. Is there fabric here? Like sheets or curtains or duvet covers or whatever that I could repurpose to use for this project. If I see something that would work, I'll grab it. And then that's how I know, okay, this is a project I'm kind of committing to. Also, sometimes you just happen to find that perfect fabric that like sparks something in you. I will sometimes just go with that instead because when inspiration strikes, like you just kind of got to go with it sometimes, you know? These look so cool. These are turning out like exactly how I had hoped. I'm very excited. Scissors or rotary blade? Take a guess. Really pressing the edges to get out any bubbles, boobles. Alrighty, this is going really well actually. So I'm gonna let those dry. I'm going to wash this paintbrush and make some tea and I will see you for the next step. My tea. Last step and last couple questions before these are done. I am getting very excited. Now I'm just gonna do a top coat on these and hope that it turns out okay. I am gonna stick with the glossy Mod Podge. Oh, that's hot, okay. What are your goals slash? Okay. What are your goals slash plans moving forward? My Immediate goals is to, <laughs> to finish this. I've got a lot of Christmas crafting that I need to finish up. I'm just kind of trying to keep the strokes even. I can't decide if I should keep them all circular or go like up and down. I'm gonna try circular and see how that looks. I think that's not bad. I think that's what I'll go with. After that, I already know what my next video is going to be. I got a lot of comments on my walk away dress video of people saying, oh, I wish I knew how to sew like you, you know, my grandma sewed, my mom sewed, or I knew how to sew when I was a kid and I forgot and I, I just don't know where to start. When I first started learning sewing as an adult, learned a lot of it from YouTube. I have a lot of resources that I used. Why not share those? Why not tell people who are asking me, how did you start or how do I start? Here, here's how you do I'm it. really excited for that video because I'm hoping it will help a lot of people and that's kind of what I started YouTube to do. I think sewing is something that everyone can do with practice and maybe everyone does it a little bit differently but that doesn't mean you can't do it. Next question. What do you like to watch or listen to while sewing? I will watch TV while I'm hand sewing. I like those kind of adventure reality shows like Survivor or Amazing Race. Because on one hand they are like interesting and intriguing but on the other hand like if you don't watch every second because you get absorbed in what you're sewing it's not the end of the world. And I do believe that that was the last question I had planned on answering. So I hope 
I don't know that that helps you get to know me better. If you have any more questions about me, feel free to ask in the comments, I will answer. And if you would like to introduce yourself, if I'm not familiar with you, you're not a regular commenter or anything, I would love to know about you. I would love you to introduce yourself because I just think sewing is one of those things that like brings people together and I love that aspect of it. So please introduce yourself. I would love to be friends. I'm gonna change the layout so you can see what I'm doing. Boop, boop, boop. This one does have a bit of bubbling and it is one of the more plain plates and also the image is a little bit off center. So I'm going to try and hide that a little bit with some metallic gold paint. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> Here are the honorable mention fashion plates that did not get turned into fashion plates. And here they are finished. I cannot wait to hang these in my sewing room. Some of them turned out better than others, but I definitely got better as I went on. These took me about $25 to make, but I did make 14 of them. It would definitely be cheaper to make just a couple. I loved how they turned out and I may make more as gifts, so if you're one of my historical costuming friends and you saw this video, no you didn't. I will post detailed pictures of these over on my Instagram and as always, if you happen to make these, please share with me, I would love to see them. And I will see you in my next video. Bye friends!